The main thing is it just remo removes spontaneity from the equation. Like I've got to be able to plan ahead. And trips. Trips, travel, which, you know, I did it anyway this time around, um, which I had to. Right, and and emergencies or exceptions. It, it kind of wrecked me a little bit, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's okay. And, but you and, still won. I, well, yeah. I did it again. What? Second mention of your the fact that you won. <laughs> yeah. Hey everybody, this feels like an episode of uh, Between Two Ferns with <laughs> Zach Galifianakis. Am I saying that right? You know, do you get that reference at all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of feels like that. Except, Except for the ferns. But between a dogwood and a house, I guess. Uh, Darren Star is episode without Galifianakis. Without, yes. <laughs> this is episode 261 of the drop set, and I have my special guest <laughs> here. Uh, <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Special yeah. guest. This is my brother Colin, um, and uh, you're also a bodybuilder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I've been I've been building this body for a lot of years. <laughs> how, how would you say you've done with that so far? Well, it's not spherical yet, but I'm getting there. <laughs> <laughs> it is a shape. Yeah, it's a shape. Bodybuilding is all about creating shape. Round is a shape. Yeah. Homer Simpson quote. Homer Simpson quote. Yeah. Yeah, so we're here in Oregon, um, and I'm here for I don't know how long, and the podcast has got to roll on, so I figure I don't want to just sit and talk to the camera, and Colin and I always do a great job of amusing each other and ourselves, so I figure... So too bad for you. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> this is what you get. Sucks to be you right now. So this is a glimpse into family life here, and I, this is where you'll then say, like, okay, we never need to see that again, but you've seen it once, and so you get the exposure, so... Um, Dina, my wife, who is off camera here, say something. Hi. Uh, she's going to maybe moderate this discussion I a little bit. I have a smart aleck comment around, um, from time to time. Yeah. I might not. Might not. Yeah. Uh, she's not wearing a mic, so she's going to have to chime in loudly. But uh, she had the brilliant idea of, like, Darren, you should just talk to some of your family who doesn't know much about bodybuilding at all. And just because the perspective is... I came to mind first. <laughs> You came to mind second. <laughs> uh, Dina was first, but she didn't want to be on camera. Okay. Fair. <laughs> you no, know, I said you should call the podcast Math or Bodybuilding, which is better. Yeah, yeah. So call, you're you're a math professor. I am. Yeah. Why? <laughs> Why would you do that to yourself and other people? It's well, you know, it's it's uh, a lot of years spent uh, mind building. Mind. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got to eat right or or wrong. It doesn't actually matter. <laughs> Man, maybe I, I'm in the wrong line of work. <laughs> I do a lot of sitting. Really? Yeah, lot, it's pretty comfortable. A lot of sitting, a lot of ice cream. A lot of sitting, a lot of ice cream. A lot of thinking. Thinking's nice. I'm getting the raw deal here. <laughs> yeah, that sounds yeah. good. Yeah. Especially after the way my diet's been this week. I'm like, <laughs> does that make me better at math if I just have a worse diet? I'm, I'm pretty sure you're halfway there. <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it's the easy half, though, right? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. The yeah. hard half still remains. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it, it was a good question that Dina had, though, because we had this conversation a few days back, and she was trying to get me to answer the question of why bodybuilding, and I wasn't really able to answer it to her satisfaction. Um, like, I was giving her a very superficial answer, and she wanted something a little more, but uh, the question remains, why math for you? Like, where did that start? Fair question. I thought I was going to do physics mm -hmm. for most of college until I somewhere along the way realized that what I liked about physics was the math. <laughs> I was like, oh, well, that was a revelation. But no, I mean, patterns are cool. Problem solving is fun. Uh, I love puzzles. Yeah. Hmm. And math kind of wraps all those things together. And so you, just, it's constant playtime. Constant playtime. Constant playtime, <laughs> which is perhaps not the most commonly heard sentiment about math. But. <laughs> no, it is not. Now, we, we are very much alike in that professionally, we are associated with things that most people dislike. <laughs> like, I'm associated with working out, which most people are like, yeah, I have a gym membership, and I went last year sometime, and everybody hates math. So, um, I mean, some people. Most people. A lot of people love math. It's great that you spin it that way for your students. It was playtime. Yeah, absolutely. And some of them have bought into it. <laughs> So what what percentage? It depends on the class. Yeah. Yeah. Because you do teach a lot of higher level stuff with other math enthusiasts. Yeah, so they've already bought into it. Yeah. 
Do you, do you teach any college algebra courses? Like um, Math 95? So Willamette doesn't have that, okay. actually. They don't offer that. Um, but they offer kind of a sideways course called Contemporary Math. Okay. And it's just whatever the professor wants to talk about. So usually what I do is I email the students before the term starts and I say, what are your majors? And then I try to find topics that fit. Interesting. So I had, I had a bunch of um, language sorts of majors one semester. And so they, at the, for their final project, they did a, uh, an analysis of the complexity of, a com comparative analysis of the complexity of five different languages. There was a, there was a paper in graph theory that they read and they studied the method for determining complexity. And I mean, there are lots of ways to do it, but they studied this particular one. And then they, they took um, a sentence that they could expand into increasing complexity, like, like you know, the, the boy ran, the boy ran to the store, the boy ran to the store to get bread, something like that. And then they translated that into each of the five languages and they ran the analysis and they compared them. It was really cool. Hmm. And they loved it. They had a great time doing it. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I, for me, the, hold on a second. This is bugging me, by the way. I'm going to come in you here. You got like, yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. I can feel it. It's, yeah. The feel's bugging me too. There, but, I know, think I that'll be better. Wanna, I was afraid if I fussed at it, it would make funny noises. It probably would. In yeah. fact, everything that you just said might have been inaudible. I don't know. <laughs> like that. I don't know. You're lucky. <laughs> you missed all that. <laughs> what, what I found with math and what kind of made it click for me when I went back to college the second time, because the first time as a music no major, I, there was no clicking at yeah. all. But being able to like see practically how it works. And I think one of the things, and this, this was not really relevant to what I was doing at all, but I remember something in integral calculus, there was a problem where you're like filling up the swimming pool, but it's also emptying at a certain rate oh, yeah, or yeah. something like that. <laughs> and it just dawned on me like, oh, okay, I can envision a scenario where I might need to know this. Mm -hmm. And if you can make it relevant for people in what they yeah. do. And you know, if somebody is going to operate in a field where they don't need high level math, you need to make the more basic stuff still seem practical hmm. and relevant. And I mean, th this particular class, um, like I don't do exams in the class because that's not what the class is about. It's the focus really is on problem solving through mathematical thinking. So it's not it's not specific content that we're studying. Like you really need to know this. It's more about um, how to think about problems. Methodology. Yeah. Yeah. From a from a mathematical perspective, hmm. and yeah, a lot of them. Uh, so people who take that class are typically people who struggled in high school math. So they had they had algebra, and the algebra class was bad, as so many of them are, right? And so they're like, I hate math. Well, they don't really hate math. They hate that algebra class. <laughs> they and, hate the way it, that they were taught it. But it makes a pretty deep impression. So then in the contemporary math class, we're doing things like I mean the the first week. We're doing puzzles, right? Here's here's a a picture, right? You you have these uh, positions on the picture. There's some lines connecting some of them. You can travel on the lines. You're not allowed to to jump off of the lines, but you can travel from dot to dot along the lines. Is it possible to draw the whole picture, all the lines, without ever drawing over a line a second time? It's kind of like the little uh, peg game at Cracker Barrel. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, they're just fun. Yeah. <laughs> But suddenly, you know, when you, when you start trying to ask questions about them, hey, look, you're doing math. Hmm. And you didn't think you were, right? Because that's not what the algebra class was. Yeah. And so it's not math. It's the way you were taught math. Or, pretty much. Or typically, a yeah. specific yeah. class. I mean, to be fair, the algebra class mostly is boring. Because <laughs> it's like, it, it, it doesn't make any sense, right? It's here are a hundred things. Memorize them all. They're not related to each other in any way. You just memorize them and then hope that you can remember which situations to use which formula in. Right. And algebra even could be way more interesting than that. Because you, it's, all, it's, all, it's all actually very sensible. You'll have a better definition of it than me, but algebra, I always just think of like solving for a variable or perhaps two. I mean, that's definitely part of it, yeah. And, and there's, there's so much practical application for that. Mm -hmm. and there's so many times where you have an unknown that you need to solve for yep. in life. And if you can think about it in mathematical terms, like that's helped me out of... A lot of situations. Yeah, yeah it can, the abstraction can make it easier yeah. instead of harder. 
Here, here's a question that I have, because if ever we go to a social function or something and people don't know me, and they'll ask, like, what do you do? I'm like, uh, and I usually try to get out of it, but ultimately ends up like, oh, I'm, I'm a, a personal donut trainer. Tester. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me, obviously. <laughs> like, oh, I'm a trainer, I'm a bodybuilding coach. And then they always come back with, like, oh, what do you think about that keto diet or whatever? Like, it's always yeah. something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So when people hear you're a math professor, what's the first thing that usually comes out? I always hated math. <laughs> Every time, yeah. <laughs> but but no, that's, that's you know an exaggeration. Some people are like, oh yeah, I I gave up at calculus or I took a math class once. <laughs> right, right, yeah. I mean those those are the most common things. It's usually some some version of loathing. Um, but but some people are are like, uh, no, actually I really enjoyed math. I, I you know didn't necessarily do great in it, but I liked I liked the patterns. You know I really loved geometry because it was logical and structured. Do you ever but, carry around a small whiteboard with you so you can just pull it out? Um, not when I'm off duty. <laughs> off duty? <laughs> like, sound like a cop. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Your standard issue whiteboard. <laughs> right, right. And, and uh, you have to have a blue marker and a black marker and an eraser. Blue and black? Yeah. Specifically, not red? No. <laughs> he just came up with a great band name, too. Some version of loading. <laughs> oh, that is good. That is uh, good. There are not enough bands in the world to use all the great names, are there? No. <laughs> we could, we, although, we could start several more, probably. So, we can occupy a few of them. Excellent. Write that down. <laughs> Done. <Yeah. laughs> Thank you. <On> it. <laughs> So now you um, don't sell yourself short. Like you are, prob I would not say a bodybuilder, but except <laughs> round. You, you wouldn't. But <laughs> so offended, so easily offended. But you're a pretty active dude. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. And and you've done sports in the past. Like you're a big yeah. racquetball enthusiast. You've yeah, done plenty of plenty of biking and cycling. Yeah. Like more more so for like commute purposes. Yes. But lots but some of it, for entertainment. Lot lots of time spent on a bike. Yeah. Um, what are you doing now? Bike. You're still doing the bike? Yeah. Mostly uh, indoor, recumbent exercise bike okay. in front of the TV. Because <laughs> I, I don't enjoy it. You're not biking to work? Not biking to work, no. no. It's a little too far now since we moved. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't trust the roads I go on. Okay. Well, I don't trust the traffic on the roads I go on. Yeah. <laughs> the roads are yeah. fine. The roads are fine, <laughs> yeah. 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 And I'm lazy. Yeah. Now, you do have that, like, you've got a little, like, multi-station weight thing. In yeah, your, yeah, in your spare area, but you don't get on that typically. Um, not a lot. I mean, it depends. I we uh, joined up at the gym near us because yeah. it has a pool, so I like to go to the pool and swim. Sort of try to alternate that with biking, but I'm, I'm on a limited membership where I have to go between noon and four. Really? Yeah, it's cheaper. It's half the price. I mean, I have to, I have to start between noon and four. I can okay. go, I can go later. But. Okay. So um, so I've been trying to alternate, except the last month as you know has been occupied otherwise yes yeah. and um argent and i typically go tuesday and thursday afternoons to the their weight room so okay. we've been using that okay cool because um, argent likes to do that cool although he's been occupied with school so <laughs> but summer's coming we're gonna we're gonna pick it up again nice. i keep pushing him he's like not today yeah too I, tired my leg hurts i feel it i feel that my bone's sticking out of my arm <laughs> <laughs> Whiner. No, not. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. And then you've also, you've been on sabbatical this year, too. Yes, so, I have. Yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. a bastard, Professor, by the way. <laughs> professoring is a sweet gig. <laughs> Man, I got a teacher on summer break over here, a br professor brother who's on sabbatical for a year, and then there's me. Still like working. Still working this morning. Waking up at four thirty, doing client check-ins. Well, I mean, I was up at four thirty too. I still get up early. You still Poor get up Darren. early. Yeah. Poor Darren. I know. Thank yeah. you. And just yeah. for the record, he checked his email yesterday. We were at a restaurant, and he checked his email when he went to the bathroom. So I did. You choose to work all the time. Now that is dedication. My clients respect that. Also, I think they might think I'm a psychopath. I don't know. You might notice how hard he's working right now on his official job. Out here in the sunshine in a little lounge chair. I mean, you know, it, I had to remember to pack the camera. That's yeah, no, work. No. That's, That's work. work. Yeah, this is work. It counts. You can write it off. I'm not saying it's all manual labor. <laughs> I did go to the gym this morning. Yeah. And yesterday. Yeah. Probably not tomorrow. I have my limits. I had not heard that. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I, seriously, I thought you went every day. No, no. I usually go five days a week. Oh, okay. Usually. 
Although lately, yeah, weekends. with the show, it's been every day just because cardio has to be done well, every day. Maybe that's why I thought that. Yeah, yeah. So you go five times a week. To lift. To lift. Yeah. Just your, that's your regular routine. Yeah. So when you decide, I'm going to go do that show, when do you make that, how far in advance do you make that decision and what's the change to your routine that happens right away? Well, the one that I just did, that decision was made about a year ago. So, yeah. So a, a lot Holy of people, crap. a lot of people do it on a whim. Um, and, and Do they so, win like you did? <laughs> not usually. Yeah. But right. some people like you know they just walk around. They're just always in great shape, and they. Oh could, yeah, I can relate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they could like you know just pick a show. Like, oh, there's a show in six weeks. I think I'm gonna do it and show up and maybe not win, but do really well. <laughs> and those people just suck. Yeah. Right. Um, I hate them. Yeah. But so you should. More not commonly. Trainers. <laughs> More commonly, people like that who are, I'm going to do this show in six or ten weeks need double or triple that amount of time but just don't know it because they haven't done it yet, and therefore they come in unprepared and they don't have a great experience because they're trying to rush the process. They don't get the result that they're looking for. So what I always tell people is take more time. And so I gave myself the better part of six months for this one. So I made the decision so about a year out. you listened to your own out. advice. I did, yeah. Good for you. I made the decision about a year out targeting this show in June knowing then that I wasn't really gonna have to start anything until like January. Um, so then that kind of helped focus okay. because let's just say, I don't remember exactly, but the decision was made June or July of last year. So then I know, did okay. Did you do this show last year? No, I did, oh, the last okay. show I did was in 21. Oh. November okay. 21, so I took okay. two and a half years kind between. Kind of tentatively brought it up to me like he thought it was gonna <laughs> wreck my world. You know, thinking about. <laughs> yeah, you kind Gentle of float, introduction to the idea. You float the idea out there just because it is an impact on you as well. Like you're not going to the gym with me every day, but you know, me being in prep has an effect on you too. As far as what we do together. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it makes me less available for stuff, and I tried to limit that. But you know, there are certain things that, you know. Out to dinner? What's that? What's a restaurant? <laughs> yeah. the, the main thing is it just remo removes spontaneity from the equation. Like, I've got to be able to plan ahead. And trips. Trips, travel, which, you know, I did it anyway this time around, um, which I had to. Right. And and emergencies are it, exceptions. It kind of wrecked me a little bit. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's okay. But and, you and, still won. I, well, yeah. I did it again. What? Second mention of your the fact that you won. <laughs> yeah, keep, There's keep, the third. Keep bringing that in. <laughs> keep, keep it yeah, up. Yeah, no. Keep it up. No, I'm very proud of you. Yeah, thank very you. Very proud of you. Very impressed. Thank you. thank you. Mom was too. Yeah. 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 Um, so about a year in advance, and then what that does is it kind of sets some things in motion where nothing really changes there, but now you've got this sense of urgency behind you, like, oh, okay, I have to start the process of leaning out for the show probably in January, which means I've only got between now, let's say this is June or July of last year, up until January to, to, <laughs> to get as fat as possible, no, to, to grow as much as possible in like the six months that are left or whatever. Um, to set yourself up for that. So then you start to just get a little bit more rigid if you've been a little complacent or lazy and like a little, you know, not tracking so much on your food, you kind of just tighten that up a little bit. And so I got into a pretty good space with that and I was in a pretty, pretty strict routine well before January rolled around and then it was just like, keep the same routine going, cut the calories down, bring in some more cardio. And then just wow. week by week, make decisions based on how you look and what your numbers are doing. That's it. Hmm. Yeah. And of course, the, the big thing is just like continue to follow the plan, because if you don't follow it 100%, then you don't really know how well it's working for you. So, so there's a plan, but you're still assessing week by week yeah. how you vary the plan. I mean, yeah. the plan's like big picture strategy, and week by week you're doing tactical sort Well, of so the, you've got the big picture strategy, which is, hey, uh, you know, 30,000 foot view, I need to lean out, I need to drop <laughs> body fat at this <laughs> I'm just picturing leaning out at 30,000 feet doesn't sound like a good idea. Oh, I thought you were saying, like, I'm, I'm, I was big enough that you could see me from 30,000 feet up. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> like, whoa, yeah, that yeah, guy yeah. should lose some pounds. He's swole. <laughs> swole. Yeah. <laughs> um, the big picture goal being to um, lean out at an appropriate rate, just playing the numbers. There's a lot of math involved in this. Pretty basic math. I don't think there's really any number theory involved or anything like that. Oh, well. Okay. <laughs> Graph theory. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, It'll do. But it's just like, I need to look, drop this many pounds per week in order to hit this target. So I had a weight cap that I had to get under. So that was the first target. And I knew I needed to be a little bit south of that just to be lean enough to look appropriate on stage. So I was kind of roughly targeting somewhere between 200 and 205 pounds, starting from 248. And so... 
If I wanted to lose a pound and a half months. to two pounds per week, then I know I needed about 22 <laughs> to 24 weeks. Um, but that didn't really give me too much margin for error, so I knew I just had, kind of had to be perfect the whole time. Oof. So That's yeah. hard to do for a week, let alone six months. Yeah, it was. It was a challenge. I'm like, my, my version of perfect is, I didn't eat that last Oreo <laughs> tonight. <laughs> I'll have it tomorrow, but... <laughs> Every, you, you know, d definitions of these things small, are... Small goals. Are, they're fungible, you know? Yeah. You can, they can be fluid, <laughs> so that's fine. Whew. All right, quick break here. I just wanted to remind everybody, check out 5starphysique.com. You can read about everything that I do there as far as coaching, have workout programs available, some merch, etc., all kinds of cool stuff. You can also check out 5stardigital.com where I have all of my online courses available. Right now, I'm working on Bikini Blueprint, Hypertrophy University, Macro Boot Camp, Men's Physique Blueprint, all kinds of stuff going on there. Those courses are going to start to become available June 1st of this year. Year. I'm working my tail off getting those things ready for prime time. You can actually go there right now, pre-order those courses if you want, or hit me up through Five Star Physique with any questions that you have on any of those courses. I'd be more than happy to help you out. Um, but then you just, you know, I had a spreadsheet set up that was telling me what my rate of loss was per week, how many pounds I had left to the cap, what that translated to as far as pounds per week, am I still on track, mm -hmm. etc. So I set up the spreadsheet to kind of help. Uh, let me know if I'm still on track with the big picture stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I would, uh, you know, I had my actual plan, which is grams of protein, grams of carbs, grams of fat, how much cardio per week. And I used those numbers and just kind of built a meal plan around mm -hmm. that where I just eat the same stuff every day just to keep it simple. Yeah. Because I don't like overthinking it. Like I could have just logged my food every day and done different mm -hmm. stuff and tracked like, oh, I want to have this today, but it just creates too much work. I'd just rather not do it. I'm lazy. Yeah. So. <laughs> So, um, so you've got to have a pretty good handle on how much you need, like just to maintain how much how much you need for that. Yeah. So that you know how much to cut that. So how do you, how do you get that? Here's my maintenance level. Well, so for like the six months before starting, we call it prep, show prep, the actual phase leading into the show. So for the six months or so before prep, I was in a growth phase, so I was in a little bit of a surplus and eating just a ton, like to the point where you just get sick of it. Like eight, 800, I've grams never of, been there. 800 grams of carbs a day, which is a lot. Like, <laughs> it, it's, it, I got to the point, and it's funny because there's this thing in bodybuilding, it's the grass is always greener syndrome, where you're in this growth phase, and you're like, God, I just want to be in a position where I don't have to eat so much all the time. <laughs> and then you're in a cut, and you're like, God, I just wish I could eat some food. It's like you can never find that balance where you're just happy. I feel like I need to try some of this just so I can experience that. I wish I didn't have to eat. <laughs> you, 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 I've never yeah. been there in my life. Yeah, you, <laughs> you experience the highs and lows. And also, like, if you try to keep it relatively clean, like, I could eat my body weight in Oreos every day and yeah. easily hit 800 grams of carbs. That's And I'd love it. That'd be fine. But if you want to eat stuff that doesn't just, you know, make you feel like garbage Straight. from overdoing it, like it has to be relatively clean. And so then like, those are always higher volume meals that are way more filling. And so then you'll spend like two hours digesting it and you're like, oh, okay, fine. Oh, now it's time to eat again, great. <laughs> like, ugh, I just want a break, <laughs> ugh. But yeah, it doesn't let up, it's a pain. So, um, shoot, there's another question that that, oh yeah, I know what it was. So if somebody wants to, to do what you did, would Don't. your, uh, yeah, right. But but you've got this uh, new line going with your, you know, fork fist. Oh. Is that is that where somebody could go if they want to do the, it? The courses. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, is, is that the kind of thing that they do there? Is that more, less specialized? It's, it's a little bit whatever? more general. It's more like, hey, learn how to do this for yourself. Um, but the, like, you know, I, for my prep, I had a coach. The mm -hmm. only problem is it was me. I was my own coach, which is a higher degree of difficulty just because it's hard to look at yourself. You know that guy. What yeah, does he know? I know. I'm not going to listen to him. Skeptical. <laughs> He's a little sketchy. Um, but you just, it's hard to look at yourself subjectively and make any comment other than like, yep, I'm fat. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> like, that, that was my comment so every stupid, week. So stupid. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. And like, yeah, no, he doesn't look, he doesn't look like he's ready. Now, granted, he's still got 15 weeks to go, <laughs> but all you're looking at is like, that's not what I'm supposed to look like. Nope. So it's, it's hard to be subjective about yourself. Like I can do that for clients all day long. Like, yeah, you look appropriate for being 12 yeah. weeks out or eight weeks out, 
But when you're looking at your own photos, you're just like fat, fat, fat. So it, it's hard to have that subjective eye for yourself. But you, you have a coach, typically. I would recommend that everybody have a coach. Ideally, not yourself. Um, but the course, the courses that I have, they can't do that for you because it's all self-directed. Like you just, they're lecture videos basically. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you learn the concepts, you learn the principles, you learn how you can apply that to yourself, but you don't get the, the objective third party eye looking at you. If you run into struggles along the way, you have to talk yourself through it. You don't have somebody else with years of experience to offer some perspective. So that's all stuff that I was missing out on during my prep as well, because I can't give myself whatever cliche comes to mind and have it have any kind of impact at all. I believe it. But for somebody that hasn't heard it before, that might be exactly what they need to hear. So, yeah. So well, you're, so you're all this uh, mm. preparations leading up to a definite impartial third party observer. Yeah. And yeah, so not having one all the way through your training seems like it, it tricky. A little, a little scary. Yeah, yeah. Like, and you've got to make sure, like, for people that I'm coaching, like, I have to be unbiased. Yeah. Um, because I don't want the judge or the panel of judges who give them feedback to be the first time they right. hear an honest hear criticism. criticism. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's that's difficult. Um, but also, like, you get up in front of that panel of judges, and y there's no speech involved. There's nothing where it's like. Let me tell you about the last five weeks I've had leading up into this show. Is there grunting? Yeah, <laughs> there's a little bit of grunting involved. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But like, you know, there's no pitching your case or like making excuses or anything. It's like, how do you look? Like Period. shit? Great. There you go. Great. You, next. Awesome. Yeah. So nobody cares. Um, so I, you know, I walked up on stage knowing like I do not feel my best just because like my guts are all torn up from stress from everything that's yeah. been going on yeah. and it's like uh just i haven't been sleeping as well and so i knew that was impacting how i looked you supposed to smile <clears throat> it, it helps you put vaseline on your teeth some people do yeah yeah <laughs> yeah I, I don't i'm just not much of a smiler so um <laughs> just i just grow a thicker beard i do matter. find that the beard helps a little yeah. bit like when I look like you should be serious. When I make my constipated face, it doesn't. It looks less like a constipated face and more just like a serious face. All right, let's see it. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I, I got. So I haven't showed you these, but I got some official stage photos today. Uh, yeah. From the photographer of the show. Nice. And I was looking at them like, I don't hate these. Nice. And pretty much every Put time. Yeah. Yeah. I posted one earlier. Cool. Um, I haven't. Seen it. No, well, you don't, you also don't follow my Instagram. You aren't you aren't on Instagram. No, but you know what? I see it pop up on Mom's phone. <laughs> it's like, oh, Darren posted something. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. You got her phone now. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. So you can stalk me there. I yeah, guess. yeah. 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 That'll work. Yeah. And then but, it won't be in my browser history. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't hate those pics. And honestly, that's like right. that's pretty the beard had a lot really. to do with it. Yeah, it, like, I, I love the beard. I thought the beard really worked. Yeah, she's not, it's not the biggest fan. Yeah. But in the show, in the show, yeah. I mean, I don't know. What, just, maybe it's just comparing him to the other ones that were there. Mm -hmm. It's like that, that's the dude I'd want to hang out with. <laughs> I'm, I'm the candidate you want to have a beer with. Yeah, right, right, right. There's a difference between Sorry. how a beard looks and then the, the prickly. How it feels. Yeah, yeah I'm not too worried about that. <laughs> Yeah, you, you're not going to come in for a it's, smooch. It's very, it's very rare. Yeah, very rare. <laughs> hmm. So when uh, it's now June, so you're you're on summer break now after yep. your sabbatical year. You going back in the fall though? Yeah. Back to business as usual. Back, not as usual. No. Because I'm doing the associate dean gig. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So. What kind of an upgrade is that in responsibilities? No. And I wouldn't call it an upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot less teaching, which is not as fun. I mean, I will miss the teaching. Okay. Yeah, I enjoy the teaching. And it's more, um, is it more research or more admin stuff? No research. No research. I mean, if I can, I will. But Okay. It's but like make it, make it on your own it's time. I happening, yeah. Oh. Um, no, it's administrative. <clears throat> a lot of meetings. A lot of meetings. <laughs> this doesn't sound like a good move. Well, I like the people. So, okay. I mean, I know who's in the dean's office now. They're great. Okay. And there, there's a chance that one of my favorite colleagues on campus will be joining me in the dean's department next year, the oh, year nice. after. Okay. So, there's that. Uh, there's that. Yeah. Raise? What's that? They're raised. Sort of. Not not a raise per se exactly, but it's an 11 month contract instead of nine. 
So there's a de facto 22.22% raise. Nice. Tutu well, repeating. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I like how you had to clarify tutu repeating. <laughs> well, I mean, people are listening. I didn't want him to go check and say, wait a minute, it didn't cut off after Wait, what kind of a professor is he? Yeah, he's, he's a, a hack. No diddly squat. Total hack. And I didn't know what it meant, but that's okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Dad's joining Thanks. us out here. Howdy, Pa. How you doing, dude? Hey. Hey. What's up? Nothing. Just recording a podcast. Casting a pod. Casting the pod. That's it. Oh, don't sit in the broken chair. <laughs> Preferably. <laughs> so, I guess, I mean, it, in a way, like, we're both teachers. Yeah. Um, mine is all individual, um, except for the course stuff that I do, which that's not live. Yours is in a group. What is it that you like about teaching? I get to talk about math every day. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's pretty awesome. But, I mean, there, there are a lot of really common answers you'll get when you ask teachers this mm -hmm. but it's because they're they're true it's you know when the student gets it gets something that they weren't getting that's really exciting a breakthrough moment yeah 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 it's like because their their world changes right and that's <clears throat> pretty cool to be there and see it mm -hmm. and uh help it along um yeah it, i mean it's mostly the students the students are, are tremendously fun you know and and they're kind of making their way into your world Right, you're, you're living in the math world, and they're coming in, and mm -hmm. that's cool. Welcome, come in. <laughs> Let's talk math, and 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 they do. Would you agree, art teacher? Sure. <laughs> I kind of, I'm kind of the same way. I mean, it's all one on one for me, but like when like when when you get somebody for me, it's the person who starts asking the questions, and you're like. This oh, is yeah. the right line of questioning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this tells me that you're you're digging into that deeper level. This yeah. is where we want to be. Like this is exciting. That's yeah. Cool. When I when I write letters of recommendations for students, like the the best thing I can say is this kid asks good questions. They're I mean those are the ones who are who are really getting it. For me, for what I do is that light bulb moment is never a quick light bulb. It's yeah. it's it's cumulative. And so the light bulb I'm always looking for is the one where my kids start to figure out that everything is figure outable. Yeah. And that doesn't happen in one math, you know, for, for math class either. It doesn't happen in one No, math, no. But it, it's like over But a time, specific idea can. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. And when they accumulate enough of those specific instances, then, then they start to get that sense you're yeah. talking about that, hmm, maybe sometime in the future I'll be able to handle this myself. It's a slow I won't. I won't need the teacher. And that's kind of the goal, is right. You want to make yourself useless. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I start exactly. with a natural advantage. But. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I had a client um, yesterday who finally walked away from me as a coach after many, yeah. many years. Yeah. Just because she was, she was like, I think I'm probably done. Like, I think I know, I know what I need to know. I'm like, nice. yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's cool. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't feel I have much more that I can really help you with. Yeah. Like. You know, her, her competitive career was over. She was kind of moving on to the next thing, and she knew what she needed to know. And awesome. Like, cool. Yeah, That's we great. have a graduation where you just boot them out the door. That's right. You have <laughs> a formal graduation period. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so they don't come to that realization themselves necessarily. Or they realize it a year or two later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess I am ready for this. It is. That is something um, that uh, I've thought about a lot. We, we do evaluations after every course where the students do these numerical evaluations that are largely useless. They're basically, I mean, they're well known to be extremely biased, right? If you're a white male professor, you're going to get much better ratings for exactly the same work than if you say a black female professor. Really? Or any, yeah, yeah. It, it's just the student perception. I mean, this is on average. It's yeah. on average. Not, not necessarily in a particular place or whatever. But, mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, they're well known to be biased and largely a measure of whether the student liked you, right? Which is not really relevant. No, um, and so uh, my favorite teachers were always the ones that had the easiest classes. <laughs> <laughs> but they are they are meaningful if you track them over time, right? You can mm -hmm. see if you have trends. Like you know what, I'm always low in this category. That's not that's not where I want to be. You know, yeah. what's more useful is the student comments. So if you can get them to write their comments about what they liked, what they didn't like, what they think you should keep doing, what they think you should ditch. I've I've had quite a few things that um, I changed the way I teach based on student comments. But better than the, those evaluations at the end of the course, it would be great if five years later, 
we could have the students come back and evaluate the course. It's like, oh, you know what? I really did learn something there, and I didn't know it until I encountered this other situation where Three years I realized down the road. how important it was, or yeah. you know what what I learned about thinking as opposed to about specifically algebra. Yeah, yeah, about the commutative property of whatever. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Or, or whatever. Yeah. Um, my, one of my favorite kind of like teachers that I had in high school, mm -hmm. fa favorite teachers, he was my, uh, uh, I don't remember exactly what it was, but some kind of algebra something. Um, he uh, had us fill out an NCAA tournament bracket yeah. and gave us extra credit for every, every game that we got right. <laughs> Because he was also like the basketball coach, <laughs> and that's the good, only th good, that's good. the only thing that got me a decent grade in that class was like the you extra credit was was pretty pretty powerful. Also, <laughs> like it raised me from a D up to a B or something wow. like that. Yeah, it was pretty intense. Yeah, so useful, useful. very useful. Yeah, yeah. See, so that's again, the kind of thing you're going to use later in life. Favorite teacher. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so the evaluations, I get it. And I'm. Uh, I find it interesting that they're skewed demographically like that, though. Oh like yeah, the averages yeah, yeah. are. Yeah. Huh. It's uh, yeah. I mean, there there are a lot of studies. That seems so it's weird. Kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Huh. But and it's not. I mean, it's not like, oh, this one's a woman. I'm gonna rate her down. They're not thinking about it. It's just that that it's unconscious. Unconscious bias. Yeah. Or or my colleagues. I have very different experiences with my students than my, my female colleagues do, right? They're like, this guy was such an ass. And he's like, well, he was always very respectful to me. Yeah, I bet he was. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, it's very different. Huh. Very different experience. It's all the programming that we don't even realize we care. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Some of them were just asses, but... You know. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah so that that's all kind of just baked into the whole system and um, the better uh, promotion committees will take it into account like we, we usually kind of devalue the numerical mm -hmm. and go more unless the there's comments. something really egregious right and there's other stuff to back it up right but it's never going to be the sole determiner of whether you get tenure or not for example interesting there's there's much more that goes on and that's like a if there's a red flag we'll look into it and see why it's there yeah like I I had one when I was up for a promotion to professor. I had this class. So basically, if you have if you have bad evaluations in some class, you should uh, address it in your personal statement. You should talk about it. here's what happened. You know, here's how I'm working on it, whatever. And I just completely ignored these horrible evaluations in this class. And I got a call from the chair of the the committee. It was like, why didn't you talk about this? I'm like, well, that wasn't my class. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> But, but you're down as the instructor, and I'm like, what is this? And I realized this was a class where we, we had had a visiting professor who was so awful, not entirely his fault. I mean, there were some medical issues going on, but, he, but it was went going so badly that we took him out of his classes and taught them ourselves. But we were supposed to tell the students, because this was 10 weeks in, there were only four weeks left. We were supposed to tell the students, when you do the evaluations, you're evaluating that professor, not, not me. That information had not been transmitted, so it wasn't oh even supposed God. to come to my name to begin with. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it's like, thank you for checking. I would have really hated to have lost the promotion on that basis. Seriously, oh my <laughs> yeah. God! Yeah. Wow, it was wow. Yeah. Uh, here's something that I'm curious about in the college professor world. Talk to me about tenure. Yeah. So love it. How long does it take typically for somebody who's on that track to be eligible for that? Um, it, most places, it's in your sixth year okay um that the decision's made so five years and then you go up okay um and there might be a little bit of variance from school to school and if you've taught somewhere else you might get a little credit okay. toward tenure but basically you want that time because you've got to make your case that you're going to be a productive member for the rest of your career okay yeah. and so then what does that mean once you're granted that status <laughs> well as my friend used to say it means they can't fire you unless they want to <laughs> I mean, I mean, there are always ways around it, but yeah. the idea is you have you it's have additional some security. It's additional security. You have some protection. Um, for example, pre-tenure faculty should not serve as department chair, okay? Because you're going to make decisions, and some of them might be unpopular, and then you get tanked and you lose your job. Oh. Post-tenure, you're going to have to make some decisions, and some of them may be unpopular. You're not going to lose your job. Interesting. Yeah. 
And it's the same kind of thing, you know, when we see something going on that impacts our junior colleagues, tenured faculty can speak up about it with a degree of safety. Okay, right? without it's, as much fear of repercussions. Right. Okay, yeah. interesting. Yeah. So what, what kind of things can still get somebody fired? From, from a tenured position. Nothing I want to say on camera. <laughs> well, I'm not, not you, saying stuff that you've done. You can, you can imagine. You can, keep, you can keep your own indiscretions oh, okay, private. Okay, That's okay, fine. Okay, yeah. Have, have, yeah you, have, you been, have you had any tenured colleagues get fired? Not that I recall. Okay. Not that I recall. We've had a few who didn't get tenure, which is always really hard. That's usually based on research. They didn't do enough research. And is that the kind of thing where, like, you apply for it, and if you don't get it, then you get to go again? You get... No, you're gone. It really. Yeah. That's it's like it. you you get tenure, you're out. Right. Oh. Win or go home. Yeah. It's a very binary thing. Oh yeah. Oh Jesus. Yeah. No. It's it's very stressful to serve on that committee. <laughs> Man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did not realize that. Yeah. It's it's pretty tough. I mean, they get so it's not um, like you're not coming back next fall. You get a year to to teach out a, your mm -hmm. contract and then and, and to find a new position. But at the end of that, nope. You're gone. And so is that like a scarlet letter that you carry around with you to the next it gig that you go to? It doesn't quite seem to be. Okay. Because there are a lot of reasons for it potentially. But yeah, I wouldn't want to try to go to a new job, a new tenure track position having just been denied tenure. Yeah. Because that's, this guy's not tenurable. Yeah. Is, what, is the message that I would think that would be sending. Right, right. Where it, 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 there's a possibility it could just have been like a personality conflict in some ways. Um, Shouldn't be. Shouldn't be, but I mean, human beings are making these decisions. Though. They are. Um, I can't see that happening at Willamette because mm -hmm. of the structure. The, the committee is a faculty committee. Um, it's got six or seven members on it from all different departments, all from different departments typically. Um, and there are a lot of checks on each other. Like if somebody's talking about something and it's like, you know, that really shouldn't have any bearing on the tenure decision, somebody's going to speak up. Um, so th there, are, there are a lot of checks and balances that, that kind of keep Is it. Is it a around. unanimous thing, a majority from the board? Majority. Okay. U usually it's pretty much unanimous. Okay. Most of the time we're in agreement. Kind of like a jury where you have a chance to kind of like convince others to come to your side. Yeah. And That's, yeah, at Willamette the way we do it is um, one person is responsible for the file. So everybody reads the file, but one person presents it, talks about it, um, makes their arguments about what they see and why they think the decision should go one way or the other. Hmm. And then there's a secondary person who kind of chimes in additionally. And then everybody else has read the file and uh, you know, maybe not thought about it as much because they're doing that for their own files. Um, but they've, they're, they've read it enough and thought about it enough to be familiar with it. And they may have other things to say like, well, I noticed this, this thing here. Did you think about that? And maybe, maybe not. Are and you then there's this, this big discussion and we make a decision. You're on this board? I have been. Yeah. You have been. Okay. I, I served on it. It's like a rotating thing. Yeah, it's it's an elected council. Okay. So I served on it and then I chaired it a different time. Hmm. That was a very painful experience. Yeah. That was. I don't know that I'd want I, that I kind of responsibility. So stressful. Yeah. I put on twenty pounds. <laughs> <laughs> so if those of you who out there who are in a growth phase and you're trying to bulk, here's how you do it. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah, yeah. Just be the chair so on a tenure stress, committee. Stressful, yeah. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of things we could do to put on 20 pounds. <laughs> yeah. If we have much more uh, trips to the coast like we did yesterday. Yeah, that would do it. <laughs> I can put on 20 pounds in a week, more. I think. Two more out of making. Two more? Two more, yeah. <laughs> Moderator, what are we missing? Just keep on going. <laughs> Dad says keep on going. Yeah. I don't Dini, know. your voice has deepened. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we've been at it long enough. I mean, uh, this is the point in the podcast where usually I say, if you're still watching this, you're the real heroes. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but I don't know. At the same time, I haven't had an interview on the podcast in a long time. And so people still listen to it somehow when it's just me. Like lately what I've been doing is just me in my studio with a PowerPoint, like... <laughs> I know it sounds riveting, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because no. it's my outline of what I want to talk about, and I just go off of that to make sure I don't miss any points. So oh, yeah. I think having the, I always enjoy doing interviews more. Usually they're all via Zoom with like other people in the industry or whatever. But yeah. um, so this is, uh, you're my first on camera, in person interview that I've ever done. Wow. In 261 Honored. episodes. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So if you're around for a few more days, maybe we'll do 262 as a follow-up as well. Okay, yeah. Well, that <laughs> way we can answer all the questions that come pouring in. Right, there will be tons. Yeah. Like, yes. 
Are you really related by blood? Uh, yes. <laughs> and and can we have a podcast with just Colin where Darren's the guest occasionally? Where he talks about math. That's what we really want. <laughs> yes. I, I might rename this podcast for one episode. I got to come up with a clever, you'll help me come up with a clever name for it. Yeah, I like can help you come up with Some kind of math derivative it. of the drop set. Sure. Yeah. Is there any kind of math term that, that's close to that? Drop set? Yeah. What is a drop set? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, so in lifting, it's when you're uh, doing a certain exercise at a certain weight and you reach failure and then you reduce the weight and keep going. Oh. Yeah. So you drop the weight, keep the set going, and you might do that two or three times. Okay. Yeah. I have to think about that. Okay. All right. All right. Cool. Yeah, no, when, you're, when your brain goes spoink <clears throat> and you reach that point of failure, then usually you, you go get a cookie or something. <laughs> go get a cookie, take a nap, yeah, something right, like that. Right. I'm starting to like the whole idea of, of math more than bodybuilding at this point. Like, there's, there's a lot well, of appeal you in know, it. Grass is always greener. <laughs> it's it's not true. always greener. I don't want to pick up bodybuilding. <laughs> no? <laughs> I'm going to stick with math. I it's like only math. greener in one direction? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're, you like your side of the fence. Yeah. yeah That's fair. Nice. It's That's nice. fair. Well, thanks for joining me, dude. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Appreciate it. Um, Y'all, I didn't say anything at the start of this, but you know the drill. If you're watching on YouTube, thanks. Give the video a thumbs up. Maybe subscribe if you like Colin. We'll see how many subscribers you get off or this video. Or subscribe if you don't like Colin. That'd be awesome, too. Yeah, well, we'll get more subscribers that way, okay. probably. <laughs> and if you're listening to the audio-only version, thank you. I am hoping, with fingers crossed, that this audio is going to be usable and not too loud <laughs> or not too quiet or anything. Maybe we'll pick up a little bit of Dini in the background, too, and not too much of this fountain back here that I forgot to turn off before we started. So, oops. Yeah, oops. Not too much wind. So, anyway, thank you all. Peace out. Catch you next week. <laughs>